Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my research into using a Raspberry Pi Pico as low capacity data storage for my 6502 computer. Check out my previous video on the Pico's file handling capabilities. This time, I'm going to examine how the Pico and MicroPython handle binary inputs and outputs. So why don't you join me as we look into the data handling capabilities and throughput of the Raspberry Pi Pico. As you know, data can be represented in many different ways. Binary, octal, decimal, hexadecimal, bits, nibbles, bytes, and words. It can get a little confusing. We'll start with the basic digital computer building block, the bit. It's either on or off, one or zero. Four bits in a nibble, eight bits in a byte. There are 16-bit words, 32-bit words, and 64-bit words. This is a base two number system where each place increments by a factor of two. You know, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, and so on. Of course, we're all familiar with the decimal system, a base 10 system. Here each place increments by a factor of 10. 1, 10, 100, 1000, and on and on. A trillion is one with 12 zeros behind it. Another system is hexadecimal, a base 16 system. Each place increments by a factor of 16. The 16 digits are 0 through 9, followed by A through F. This is my favorite, but then I like to write 6502 machine language by hand, so take it with a grain of salt. I'd be sliding our PDP-8 fans if I didn't mention the Octal system, a base 8 system. But since I don't like Octal, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, that's pretty basic. Now comes the fun part. How do you display the data and how do you store it? For instance, 123 in the decimal system is the same as 7B in the hexadecimal system. It's also 111. 1, 0, 1, 1 in the binary system. For our Digital Equipment Corporation friends, it's 173 in octal. But here's a twist. It's also equal to a curly bracket in the ASCII and UTF-8 character encoding schemes. To see how that translates into hardware, I'll wire up a Pico. I solder on pin headers and plug the Pico into a breadboard. I plan on using 8-bit parallel data transfer between the 6502 and the Pico, so I'll need 8 inputs and outputs. In order to test the outputs, I add an LED and 470 ohm dropping resistor to each GPIO 0 through 7. The hardware is ready, so let's write some code. Just to let you know, I'm a bit of a Neanderthal when it comes to programming in Python. You know, me get rock, hit code. I have no finesse here. I wouldn't be surprised if many of you could do this with half the code. So please bear with me and I would appreciate any improvements you see. First import the machine and uTime libraries into MicroPython. These libraries let us access the input, output, and timing capabilities of the Pico. Next, define eight GPIO pins as outputs by using the pin object of the machine class. We will assign each GPIO pin to a bit out variable. I want to output a block of 256 bytes through the GPIO ports so I can get a feeling if MicroPython is quick enough to act as a surrogate disk drive. Therefore, I'm setting up a loop to count to 256 while outputting the results. After I initialize the counter, I define the get bit function which shifts the byte to output right the appropriate number of bits and then ands the result with one to determine if the bit is a one or zero. The result is then output to the GPIO pins using the value method. I have one statement for each bit. Then I add a sleep period so I can see if the program is working prior to incrementing the counter. Let's first set the sleep timer to 1 20th of a second. This should be slow enough for us to see if the program is working. I'll click the Run icon, and it looks good. We see the counter value being output.
Next, let's comment out the sleep statement to see how fast this can run. Wow, I think that blink was the entire 256 bytes. That looks pretty fast, but I suppose I should measure it. Let's add another loop to output 256 bytes 256 times for a total of 64k bytes. Then I'll add a timer function and calculate the bytes per second transfer rate. Okay, let's start the program. I'll fast forward to the end. It took 13.2 seconds to output 65,000 bytes. This is a data rate of almost 5,000 bytes per second. This is three times slower than the maximum speed of a single density five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. However, after taking into account the overheads of a mechanical drive, the effective speed of the Pico is probably very similar to the floppy drive. So far, the Pico looks promising as a surrogate disk drive. To test the parallel data input throughput, I'll use the Pico itself. I'll read the byte data output on GPIO pins 0 through 7 with GPIO pins 8 through 15, which are configured as inputs. Then I multiply and add the bit information together to reconstruct the byte that I had output. So the timing isn't affected by the Thani output, I'll store the data in a list and then I'll output it later. I'll start a timer at the beginning and end it 256 bytes later. It took 97 milliseconds to generate, output, read, and then store 256 bytes of data. This translates to approximately 2,600 bytes per second. When I remove the byte output section of the code, inputting 256 bytes only took 38 milliseconds yielding an input rate of 6,700 bytes per second. I also tried building the input byte by ORing the appropriate bit and shifting the byte to the left. The results were the same, however, it took 20% longer. Thanks for joining me today. We examined the parallel data throughput of the Raspberry Pi Pico while using MicroPython. While not exactly blazing speed, the results were respectable and are on par with the mechanical floppy drives of the early 1980s. No doubt, much higher speeds could be obtained using C, C++, but for now, I'll continue to develop a surrogate disk system for my 6502 homebrew computer using MicroPython. The next step is to address the logic level differences between the 3.3 volt signal level of the Pico and the 5 volts of the 6502, so stay tuned. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!